the last property we looked at was that if we do this row operation of adding a multiple of one row to another row, it doesn't change the determinant. That directly ties to this next new property, which is if a matrix contains a row of zeros, then the determinant is zero. And this is really easy to establish because take that row of zeros and do this row operation on it of taking row 2, which is the zero row, and adding one times any other row, let's say the first one. Okay, what is that going to do? That's going to give you this matrix or this determinant, and that determinant has two equal rows, and so therefore that determinant is zero. Of course, this row operation doesn't change determinants, so these two matrices have the same determinant. So ultimately, we're saying because this had a row of zeros, the determinant is zero. And that establishes property number six. Now, let's take a look at the seventh one. This is one of my favorites because it really helps find determinants really quickly. It says, if a determinant is triangular, and this works for upper triangular, or lower triangular. So this could be upper triangular, so that would look like this with zeros below the main diagonal, or if it's lower triangular where we would have the numbers here and zeros above the main diagonal. Either way, the determinant comes from just multiplying just multiplying the numbers in the in the diagonal, okay? And it works for any size square matrix, okay? Let's see why that's true. Now, in the first step, we're going to assume that x is not 0. Okay? Because if x is 0, then we'll get a row of zeros in the first row, and the determinant is 0. And the property still works, because then that 0 times whatever will be 0. So let's assume x is not 0. To continue, what we're going to do is we're going to do this row operation, we're going to replace row 2 to row 2 minus a over x row 1 and what that's going to do is that's going to turn the a into a 0, so we're doing elimination. And so when you do that, you turn, the, you turn that entry into a 0. Similarly, still since x is not 0 we could do this, we eliminate g, okay, using the first row, and here we have x 0 0, that's nice. Let's continue elimination. We continue elimination by um, doing what? By changing the h to 0 using the second row. Okay, And finally now we have a diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrices are really nice. We're going to use linearity to factor out x from the first row. So now we get x times the determinant, 1, 0, 0. And remember, linearity works one row at a time. And next we're going to factor out y from the second row. So now we'll have x, y, and then the second row turns into 0, 1, 0. And then in the third step we're going to factor out z from the third row. So now we have x, y, z. And look at this matrix we got. This is the identity matrix. And the determinant of this matrix is 1. So finally the answer is x, y, z times 1. So it's x, y, z. And of course going back to the original matrix here, x, y, z is what? x, y, z is um, the numbers in the diagonal. So we've established that if you have a triangular matrix, the determinant is just a product of the diagonal entries. Okay, now I have, to, I have to point one more thing out here. We used y in the denominator, so even at this step you need to say that assume y is not zero, and you can do that because if it were zero, you'd have a row of zeros, and the answer still is zero, and that's fine. Okay, so this is the proof that if a matrix is triangular, the determinant is easy. It's just a product of the diagonal entries.